Hi, Mom. Yeah. No, can you pick up Chris after school? Yeah, I'm at, I'm at the doctor's. Mrs. Harris? Describe your symptoms. H hang on. Stress, headaches, nausea. Well, I work on Saturdays. And how long has this been? Equanimity. Balance your lifestyle. Dr. Kenneth Jane, thank you for joining us here on the Valder BB Show. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm so excited that you're going to talk with us about progress for multiple myeloma patients. And today is an important day for a lot of people probably listening because I was looking at the statistics and it affects a lot of people. Absolutely, madam. It's a disease we have to take care of, that's for sure. Well, they said estimated in just 2016 alone, 30,000 people in the U.S. will be diagnosed with multiple myeloma, and an estimated 12,000 plus will lose their life to the disease, doctor. Yes, ma'am. It's a disease that we have to make sure uh, we understand and make sure we're aware of, and that's kind of what I'm happily uh, going to do today is hopefully make people more aware of the disease, multiple myeloma. Tell us what multiple myeloma is. Sure. So myeloma or multiple myeloma is a rare blood disorder or a disorder of the bone marrow where your blood cells are actually made inside your bones. It's a very complicated disorder that has a number of issues we'll talk about in a second. Uh, but it's a disease of generally older patients, meaning patients over 65 make up the ma vast majority of individuals with multiple myeloma. We know that it's more common in men and it's also at an increased risk for patients of Af African American descent. Um, all that being said, we know it's a disease that, again, is complicated, and it's a disease defined by symptoms, and those symptoms end up being weakened bones, so you can fracture bones, uh, renal insufficiency, uh, something called you know, your blood counts can drop, so your red cells and white cells drop because the manufacturing plant is, is no longer functioning appropriately, uh, and then it can also cause an increase in your calcium levels. It can have its own issues. So all those being said, we know that it's critical for us to know how to treat this patient population, how to get disease under control, and have the therapies to do so for long periods of time to avoid these catastrophic issues. As the group that's most vulnerable to this, and it, is it easier diagnosed now that technology is advanced? Uh, it's a it's a diagnosis still that is defined by the symptoms that we discuss. So we have lots of tests that allow us to identify the disease itself, uh, procedures that help us do that. But really, unfortunately, today still the vast majority of our patients present with these symptoms by uh, finding labs with their primary care physician, or actually, unfortunately, developing catastrophic issues, ending up ending up in the hospital and finding these things after they've already already happened to them. Is myeloma multiple myeloma? Curable or just treatable? So today it still remains incurable, and that's kind of what we want to make sure we bring awareness to is the fact that we're making huge progress today versus a decade or even 15 years ago, where outcomes are much better, meaning patients live longer, um, and they're able to live the lives they want to live with our new therapies. But we know that myeloma is a disease where our patients cycle between responses, so, so success, and failures, which are relapses. And so we need to keep developing more therapies to highlight that and can you combat this never-ending cycle, and hopefully, again, to develop curative intent therapies, but we're not quite there today. But again, why it's so important for us to raise awareness today. When we say raise awareness, we want people to be aware, but do we want them to go to the doctor? Do we want them to ask tests? What are we, what are we trying to say in awareness? I think awareness is multifactorial, meaning there's lots of things we can look at it as. One is we want our patients to be aware of what's going on. We want our our primary care physicians to be aware of what myeloma is and make sure they look for it more quickly, but also aware in the fact that this is a rare disease where it requires a lot of uh, continued research and things like that to continue to battle this and make it a curative disease. Um, and so that's why I think awareness is important to recognize there are places to go and to help us uh, in the research world and the clinical world define and identify new therapies. It seems that my doctor is now uh, um and probably always has been a medical detective. It's his job to 
to look for these things and to send it out to specialists to find out if this is. Is that correct in what I'm thinking? Uh, absolutely. And so one of the things we think about is the front lines are our primary care physicians, and they do a great job of identifying patients that they are concerned about and then ordering the extra tests that might be necessary. Because myeloma doesn't always come up and isn't identified early because there aren't any specific signs or symptoms till late in advanced stages. In those advanced stages, those symptoms come back in labs or they come back in other things. So it's critical for our, again, our, our, our primary care physicians to really focus on that and know where to send patients. And I think they're doing a fantastic job. And I think it's a really important part of why we're doing a better job as well is getting patients to a specialist a little sooner. September is Blood Cancer Awareness Month. How long has Blood Cancer Awareness Month been around, doctor? Uh, it's been around for a long period of time. I can't say exactly when it, when it started, but it's a critical aspect for everything because it provides us at least a focus on something that might not be as commonly thought about as the other solid tumors that we think about on a daily basis. So we have a, uh, a time frame where we're trying to bring awareness to our patients, our caregivers, and then the patients who, and the people who don't yet have these diseases and hopefully never have the disease to participate in our ability to, to care for our individuals and provide support for our individuals. Doctor, you're saying that the, and, I, and, and I'm so interested in this because so many people are impacted by it. You say the uh, general physician is usually on the front line, but what about those people who don't have a general physician or who are not going to the doctor? The reason why I say that is my company has moved into, we have a new brand where we're taking this information direct to health fairs, and we're finding people, this is where they're getting their health information from and their health treatment a lot of times. I think it's just critical we think about how medicine is being practiced as a whole, um, but really for us it's making sure you have the right medical care, the right way of recognizing what might be going on to make sure you get to the next level of care. Uh, primary care physicians are one way of looking at it. Healthcare professionals of all sorts can identify these issues and hopefully get you to the right specialist in the appropriate amount of time before something uh, more catastrophic happens. Uh, I think that's how I would answer that one. Where can my audience go online to get more information? And I got one more question for you. Sure. Uh, the most important thing, for, in my opinion, is an educated patient or an educated patient uh, support group. Uh, and so what we have, there are lots of great resources out there for multiple myeloma. One is the Multiple Myeloma Research Foundation. Another is the International Myeloma Foundation and the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society are all great resources that will have vetted highly uh, educational uh, information for our patients with myeloma and other blood cancers. Um, and that setting is a great way for our patients to start while they're trying to find an appropriate uh, physician. What role does, my question is, what role does exercise, wellness, proper sleep, and a healthy diet does that play any role in this disease? I think my general philosophy is that's good for everybody, um, but it's not something that's going to truly uh, affect how well myeloma is controlled or its progression in terms of moving front to an actual presentation. So again, important because it makes sure that you're healthier, you may be able to tolerate therapies, you may be able to do those things a little better. So those are all critical things to think about, but they're not truly going to change, in my opinion, um, how the disease progresses and or develops. Doctor, thank you. This has been a very interesting conversation. Please. Thank you very much for your time. Do what you do. Thank you.